You're listening to The Foundation of Wellness, a refreshing take on diet and lifestyle. With Jessica Dogert, a registered dietitian nutritionist, and Marisa Moon, a primal health coach. Hey you guys, my name is Jessica and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and the voice behind Mindful Musings and you can learn all about me on my website at jessicadogert.com. Hey everybody, it's Marisa, Marisa Moon, and I'm a certified primal health coach. You can learn more about me at marisamoon.com and even find my recipes at mylongevitykitchen.com. So this is episode 39 and it's a special one. It's going to be called the ideal way to start intermittent fasting. So let's answer the most obvious question that we should be asking first. What is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is a pattern of eating where you eat during certain times and then fast during others, right? Exactly. I mean, it represents this approach to eating or not eating during a certain window of time. We all do it all the time. It's just how long of a break you're taking before you go to bed or after you wake up from eating again. It's basically fasting as we know it, but it's this on and off cycle purposefully cycled on and off more frequently than a standard fast and it's this on and off cycle that helps us get an opportunity to take a break from digestion start healing and acquire the right amount of nutrients that we need during the day and still get to eat which makes it way more fun than regular fasting i mean fasting really has no specific duration since it's just the definition of not eating And that's something that we all experience when we're sleeping, for instance. When we're sleeping, we're fasting. And we all fast overnight between dinner and breakfast the next day, like eight hours or so, right? That's why fasting shouldn't be confused with starvation or sound so scary. I mean, it's really a part of everyday life already. I mean, the word breakfast actually came from breaking your fast, break fast. It's it's natural. And a lot of people think that, you know, fasting is very difficult to do. But exactly like you said, if I finish dinner at 8 o'clock at night and not eat until 8 o'clock in the morning, that's so easy and simple. And intermittent fasting, we're going to be calling it IF a lot. It's all about when you eat. I think many people hear the word fast and they think that it's a plan about starving, just like Marisa said, but that is not the case. You're not actually focused on eating less. You're just trying to eat your meals in a shorter window of time. So it's really not meant to be deprivation. It's just about giving your body a rest and reset. Totally. I mean, trust me, I was the last person who would ever think they'd enjoy fasting or even attempt fasting. I mean, I love food. It's like my favorite thing in life. You know that, Jess. People that know me, like, I come from this huge Italian family of amazing cooks and restaurant owners, and and my idea of having fun is actually cooking. (laughs) I mean, my Instagram feed and my DVR are just, like, loaded with cooking shows and recipes and I went to culinary school just for fun. That's how much I love food. You're getting the idea, right? But it was like so many different points in my life, all in the last decade. It just kept bringing me back to these places where I'd be looking for answers about my health. And every time when it got bad enough, I was willing to try anything to find a solution. I mean, I think everyone can relate to experiences like that. And one of those instances just made me ready for intermittent fasting. I'm sure some people are wondering what kind of experience you went through. Do you want to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, the one that made me start intermittent fasting, well, it was several years after I was diagnosed with inattentive ADD. And energy and focus were these things that I so desperately wanted to acquire. Like naturally, I wanted to figure out how to optimize those things because I was struggling with them so much, but I had so many ideas of what I wanted to do with my life and I couldn't really achieve the things I wanted to achieve with this in my way. So I was trying all different natural remedies and fasting was one of the remedies I learned about enhancing your brain and cognition, but it wasn't something I tried yet. It was and still is really popular in the field of ancestral health and part of my primal health coach education actually so it was always on my radar and I really couldn't ignore it and the more I was exposed to it the more it became like I was comfortable with the idea of it and once I was finally ready to try it which was probably like five years ago now 
everything just started falling into place. I mean, we're talking about no more wildly excessive appetite and no more second guessing my diet or thinking I need to spend hours at the gym or do those two a day workouts. And I'm, I finally had insanely more energy and focus that is immediately noticeable. It was like I finally found this natural way to boost energy and focus those things that I wanted and follow my dreams in a way I never thought was even possible for me. That is amazing. First of all, the way that you're explaining your experience with just so much like joy and excitement that you finally found this like dieting freedom is amazing. And it just, it would make everyone want to jump on board. But I have felt the same way, especially in terms of like energy and mental clarity and focus and like reduced cravings with fasting. Yeah. It truly is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really a good place to talk about some of the benefits of intermittent fasting. And there are all sorts of benefits and potential when it comes to incorporating IF. I think the most desired benefits are, of course, weight loss and increased fat burning, but also things like enhanced immunity and anti-aging for the body and the brain. And many people see improvements in their energy levels, cholesterol, blood sugar, and insulin levels, even in the case of diabetes, all of these possible benefits once they get into this regular habit of taking breaks from constant eating. It's incredible. I mean, just listening to that list gets me so excited. And it's being highly studied right now and applied for its potential in treating and possibly preventing certain types of cancers and tumors. And the same goes for the field of Alzheimer's disease. You said constant eating, Jess. I love that you put it that way because it's true. Constant eating is a real issue for most of us today. No matter your body type, it really is a huge distraction. It, it affects our mood. It affects our energy. And not until I tried intermittent fasting did I realize how much my energy and my focus and my mood was just being totally warped because of my constant eating. It was like I didn't even know who I really was. My body was so busy sending blood and energy to my digestive system that there wasn't even much left to send to my brain and the rest of my body. It's like all my energy and focus had to go to digestion because I was always eating. I was in a cycle of dependence and I didn't even know it. I mean, I kind of knew it, but I would brag about it. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I just, I love to eat all the time. Even if I just ate and you offer me something, I'll eat like I'd a human garbage disposal. That's what I would always say. I'm a human garbage disposal. And it was just kind of funny. That's how my whole family was. And I wish I knew sooner that I didn't have to diet forever or spend hours at the gym just to prevent pounds from creeping on. It was like my weight was always fluctuating. And I wish I knew that taking a break from eating would actually help my appetite. I mean, that's such freedom for me. It impacted my life in, in such a multifaceted way, just intermittent fasting in general. That That's why now I decided to teach it. I want to teach others how to do it because it's really such an amazing tool to have for optimal health. I'm so happy that you're teaching this and you're just an expert in this field because I noticed with all of my clients, constant eating is an issue, like you've said. You know, I'll review their food logs, and not only are they having a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner, and not only are they starting to eat at 7 a.m. and not finishing until 10.30 or 11 p.m., but they're constantly snacking throughout the day. That's mm -hmm. like more of their meal than their actual breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, Marisa, I've seen what you're doing, and I love your four-step program. I'm, I'm so glad that I got the chance to attend your webinar. It was so helpful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was so glad you were there, by the way. But I'm just really loving this avenue. The, the four-step method is, is an easy way for me to make the information accessible to everyone and as flexible as possible. And that's really important, isn't it? Yeah, flexibility is really important if you want it to become a lifestyle. And there are several ways to do intermittent fasting, but one of the most popular is eating for eight hours a day and fasting for 16 hours. Some people like the strict protocol, but personally, I like a more intuitive approach. So for myself and clients, I recommend a lighter version of intermittent fasting, and I call it 12 on, 12 off. It's where you eat for 12 hours, and then you don't eat for 12 hours. So think 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. And this is really just going to allow your body to rest. So studies show that you can get way more benefit from fasting longer, but the 12 12 option gives some benefit without it being too difficult to, to do. Mm -hmm. 
So you pick your own 12 hours and it may not be the same every day. You just look at the clock after your last bite of food and count 12 hours to see when your next meal will be. Again, it's really not meant to be about starvation, just a rest and reset for your body. So giving your body time and space without food, like Marisa has been talking about, is so healing and reparative and your body can do its own auto clean mode, just like an oven. Yeah, just like an oven. I, I think that's an awesome way to describe it. If we don't give our body the break it needs overnight to repair and fight infections and rebuild new tissues and healthier cells, then you're aging so much faster than your body was actually designed to do. I mean, why not tap into the full potential of your body and give it what it expects from you? I mean, fasting sounds extreme at first, but it's it's really natural. It's It's something humans have always experienced throughout history because of life circumstances, because of their living conditions. Food was not always readily available. They didn't have preservatives and refrigerators. And every which way we turn now, we are tempted with snacks and treats. And it's different today. That's why the idea of fasting just sounds crazy. But it's what your body literally expects from you. And I always say that 12 hours, that 12 hour break you just suggested, Jess, is perfect. I always say that that is the bare minimum that I think any adult should be going for overnight between their last bite before bed and their first bite in the morning. And I know nighttime snacking is is really hard for a lot of people. And that's something that you can tackle like in my program or with a health coach and address at the same time, because you are really retraining your body to work in a different way. And and this is essential for good health today, that 12-hour break. I mean, that's exactly how I introduce intermittent fasting to anyone learning my method. And if you want to know the four steps, they're in a download I've created for everyone called My Four Steps to Successful Intermittent Fasting. Um, It's available for you to grab at marisamoon.com slash blog slash 39. And Marisa is like Marissa with one S. My last name's Moon, like the moon in the sky. So marisamoon.com slash blog slash 39. You should probably pause this episode and go download it right now so you don't (laughs) forget. But Marisa, you start your four-step method with a pretty impactful first step. I think step one is the reason why your method leads to a lifestyle of easy intermittent fasting. Whereas just diving into IF will often lead others to just frustration and feelings of deprivation or really just wanting to quit altogether. Yeah, yeah, honestly, that first step is really what makes the difference between an intermittent fasting plan that works and can immediately improve your life or one that is really difficult and more like what you just described. So to all of our listeners, the step one she's talking about is to uh, uh, go 21 days with a moderated carb intake. You want to keep your daily carbs under around 130 grams a day or less. Now, I suggest 21 days in this carb range because of a proven strategy created by Mark Sisson, the author of The Primal Blueprint and the founder of my ancestral health school where I was certified. Now, this suggested length of time works because that's how much your body needs to adapt to a more natural carbohydrate intake and a more natural insulin response. I mean, remember, insulin is what your body produces in response to your carbohydrate intake especially. And when insulin is constantly being produced, you're creating more inflammation in your body, more stress on your organs, and you're preventing a lot of other benefits from occurring, like fat burning. Not to mention that you're storing more fat in the process. I mean, insulin is a fat storage hormone. Now, 130 grams of carbs a day gives you enough leeway, so you can still have really nutritious carbohydrates, like uh, tons of different fruits and vegetables, and you can even like have, you know, a little bit of flour-based foods in that range. It's totally reasonable, so this is not low carb. I love this range. It keeps it low enough to retrain your metabolism, and this 21-day phase primes your metabolism for optimal function, flexibility, efficiency. I mean, that's what makes the fasting so much easier thanks to this phase. Way easier. I mean, I love how you're not saying no carb or extremely low carb. I mean, 130 grams of carbs per day really allows you to still enjoy foods that you love, right? Mm-hmm. I think this is such a valuable step to take. 
I know how impactful it can be. You know, without taking this realistic approach to your carb intake, you are stuck in a vicious cycle of increased appetite, overeating, unhealthy obsessions with eating and dietary habits. I mean, carb moderation or reduction really brings everything into balance. It reduces cravings for me for sure. Yeah. I mean, huge, huge reality check. I mean, you finally realize how much control you have over your appetite and the way you feel. And that midnight snacking starts to really disappear. But we should consider the classic dietary advice, conventional wisdom that tells us breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And this type of advice tells us you need to eat in the morning, right when you get out of bed, in order to give you energy to face the day. And that following your breakfast, you have to keep snacking frequently just to sustain these healthy blood sugar levels, right? Right. (laughs) And you have to watch your portion sizes. You have to watch your calories. You have to eat in regular intervals and like never miss a meal, all the while trying to balance calories in and calories out and keeping a strong hold on your willpower. This has proven difficult to manage and ineffective for weight loss, especially in the long term, and not to mention constant eating and high calorie dieting dramatically increases aging and disease risk. My gosh, you could not have said it better. There's so many things to think about there. I mean, that advice that breakfast is the most important meal of the day was actually a marketing campaign created by the Kellogg's team in the 1800s. They wanted to create a demand for their breakfast cereal. Most people don't know that. Most people think breakfast is the most important meal of the day is a recognizable phrase because it's true. My grandma still tells me that. Oh, if yeah. I'm sleeping over at her house, you have to eat breakfast. You know it's the most important meal of the day. We have been <laughs> tricked. I mean, advertisers started planting this idea in the mind of families all over the United States back then because they wanted mothers and homemakers to get used to the idea of pouring these dried, baked, puffed, sugary, whole grain breakfast cereals into the bowl in a flash so breakfast could be on the table in an instant, Right. So here it leaves us generation after generation thinking that breakfast consists of these high carb foods and that breakfast truly is the most important meal of the day. But then you start looking at the science and all those headlines and where they come from and you realize that those top food companies like Kellogg's are the ones funding the research for these studies. And it's just there's too much bias and too much money put into this that's confusing the American public as a whole. You know, Mm -hmm. and that really shines a light on the biggest mistake that people make when they try intermittent fasting at first. They don't optimize their diet before intermittent fasting or while they're trying their first phase of intermittent fasting. When you're overeating on carbs and you're used to eating a high carb breakfast, high carb meals, meals with bread and pasta, sugar, dessert every day, and then you're under eating fats and protein. Most people are under eating protein. Most people are under eating fat because that's what we've been taught for so long. Then you're really setting yourself up for frustration, exhaustion, and of course rebellion. When you try fasting, you're going to be like, oh, it's not for me. Oh my gosh, like I'm just hungry all the time. I can't. My blood sugar, I just can't. I'm moody. I'm cranky. I'm hangry. But really, You need to give your body what it expects from you uh, on every level. And that's what I'm trying to teach in this course. If you want it to work, if you want intermittent fasting to work, you have to optimize your diet to something more natural for the human body. And you have to take an intuitive approach to intermittent fasting instead of forcing it and following so many rules. Like I love the 16-8 method that you mentioned earlier, the 16-hour fast with eight-hour feast. And I love the 5-2 diet and there are eat, stop, eat. There are so many really impactful and proven intermittent fasting methods but I know that there is a whole sea of people out there like me that wants the freedom to just eat and not eat more intuitively they want the ability to have brunch with their friends on the weekends if they feel like it or have breakfast on vacation when it's all inclusive but not feel like they're falling off their diet and what I teach is that you are actually optimizing the benefits of intermittent fasting your metabolism the way your body uses calories by switching it up I mean that's why that like less rigid program that this more intuitive approach gives you better results. It's incredible, but your body expects that from you. Your body doesn't want this type of eating routine. I'm already so obsessed with your program because I feel like you're not just teaching us the 16, eight method or the 12 on 12 off method. And you're not just explaining all the wonderful benefits of fasting. You're actually saying 
you know, if you switch your routine of how to eat first and then transition into fasting, that's where like the magic happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone can really benefit from seeing your four-step method. You know, where can they grab it for free? Yeah, that's at marisamoon.com slash blog slash 39. And you can learn more about that and how to take action and join us in the community if you go to marisamoon.com slash IF freedom. I kind of want to end on this really awesome quote by Dr. Jason Fung, where diets can complicate life, intermittent fasting can simplify it. Where diets can be expensive, intermittent fasting can be free. Where diets can take time, fasting saves time. And where diets may be limited in their availability, fasting is available everywhere. I think that's really powerful. Oh man, Dr. Jason Fung is the best and it's another great resource for anyone out there. Dr. Jason Fung wrote The Complete Guide to Fasting with Jimmy Moore and it's something I love giving out to some of my clients to help encourage them to be more intuitive with their fasting or extend their fasting. So I I really just want to get the word out there and help people understand that there is a way for this to fit in your life. Just your 12 on 12 off idea is just the best place to start if you are not ready for my carb reduction or it scares you. That Everybody in my course actually has to attempt a 12-hour fast just to do a reality check, and that's what they will continue attempting through the 21-day um, carb moderation because that 12-hour mark, I don't care if you never finish the course. I don't care if you don't apply anything else that I teach you. If you just do that. That can be life-changing alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So thanks for letting me go on about intermittent fasting, you guys. I, it's really close to my heart. It's affected my life in a big way, and... I want you guys to tell somebody about it, you know, share this episode and leave us a review on iTunes. If you're listening, those reviews really help us get new listeners and get visibility and we need your help getting the word out. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.